everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Altenew once again. Um, so this is another item that they had sent to me and asked if I would just have fun with it. Um, and it is their watercolor, the artist watercolor pan set. So could not pass that up. So this is something that I did have my eye on, and this is what it looks like. This is the case. It's very similar to the metallic watercolors um, that I created with um, a little bit ago. And this is how I swatch um, my watercolors. I just cut some strips that fit into the container. Um, I don't necessarily label them. I just want to see the colors, and I just make sure that they are in the order at which they sit in the pan. These are half pans, and as you can see, the centerpiece does come out, and it is in there very snugly. Just say it's a technical word. So you would be able to have all three of those compartments to mix your watercolors if you needed to have a, a palette available. Or you can keep it in there, um, by all means, and just use the two. This is the stamp set that I'll be using for today's project, and it's called Engraved Flowers. So I'm going to use that one single flower that's uh, curving up just a little bit. I will be stamping this image onto a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper. It is my favorite when it comes to watercolor papers. Um, I've tried many. Um, I've tried cold press, I've tried, you know, the hot presses and, and all of those uh, different names that are out there. But I go to my Canson XL. I don't know if it's because I started with it, so I'm used to it. I know what it does, um, but it, it still is. It's, it's absolutely my favorite. I stamp this using my Versifying Black. Whenever I do watercolor, I do like to have that crisp black ink and I am going to use a clear embossing powder to um, heat set this. When I do watercolors um, I love using them but I am not a watercolorist so to stay in those lines yeah that wouldn't happen which is fine if that's the look that I'm going for. That wasn't the look that I was going for. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I did stay in the line so I will use a embossing technique kind of gives me the wells. Now I am going to apologize now. For some reason um, things shifted and I am constantly working in the bottom left hand corner so I'm going to apologize now. This will change um, but you'll see me use this product more. Never fear. So I chose one of the pale pinks and I'm going to put that layer down first. And I'm going to do that for the entire image. I want this to be very pale. Now remember, with watercolors, and again, the watercolor information that I have is for card making and very basic. Um, so again, I'm sure I'm going to use improper terms, um, but know that I, I just love the process. And that's what I want you all to do. Just love the process. Um, love creating. So I'm using, I've watered down a lot in the palette. You can see that there. I have a lot of water with this. And then what I'm doing is after I put that down with my paintbrush, you see the pink towel that I have there. After I go in my water, I put my brush on that to, re to remove some of the water so that when I come back to these petals, I can pick up that color and sop it up to make it flat, to make it even. Now remember, when watercolors dry, they dry back. They dry lighter than what you see. And I will, and you can see I just have, here it is, this is where I made the mistake. I zoomed in even more, and I shouldn't have done that. So again, I apologize. For some reason, I go further into that corner. Um, but you do see it. I'm so sorry. I know someone's gonna be upset. I'm sorry. So you can see that my paintbrush can just keep on lifting up that color. And I want that front petal to be lighter than the others. So now I'm going to do the same thing with 
the green. So I've chosen this bright green um, because again, it's going to be in the background and I'm just going to go over the entire image and then I will sop it back up using that paintbrush. Um, again, I just want a hint of that color. Now, basically I, what you could say is I'm doing like a glazing technique because I'm going to come in on with a second color on top of this light color that I'm leaving. Okay. Yeah, this is where, no, I'm not sure why I did this, but okay. Just by adding clean water with my brush to these areas as well, will also lighten them up. That's the beauty of watercolor. And that's what I look for. You know, with all of the videos that we watch, I look for, can I pick this color back up with my brush? Um, how transparent are they? Can I layer with them? How do they mix? Um, those are all the things that I'm looking for as I'm working with this project. I will say this, these are wonderful. Absolutely. This is a wonderful set. Um, it's got the perfect amount of colors. There are 24 colors in this set. It's got a great range. And by mixing see your colors together, you'll get, as always, even more. So when it comes to the green, I added the dark blue, a dark, deep blue to um, this, to that bright green. Because you can see now it just pulls it back. Um, it just, it just, it's not as bright as a green as what you saw before. I'm going into this area just to add this darker shade. And then I'm coming in and just dabbing the darker color in again to give those blends, to give those that dimension. Um, one of the things, and I know if you've seen any of my videos, prior to this, one of the things that I do say when it comes to watercolor is I could just put water down on a piece of paper, put a drop of watercolor in it and just watch it go. I find that extremely mesmerizing. Um, it's like the fish tank. Like I said before, I always say this, it's like the fish tank or the fireplace. You know, you can just get lost into this. What I'm going to do now is the same color that I used as the base for the flower. And here I go. Here's where I go off to the side. So again, I do apologize. So the same pink that I used before, I'm going to pull in a bright purple and mix that with the pink. What is wonderful with this stamp set, the engraved flowers, the lines show you and help guide you where those darker shades should go. So I found them helpful. Now, I got really carried away with this front petal. I just kept on working it. I wouldn't let it alone. I added too much color. So the best thing that I could do is just walk away from it, leave it alone, and let it dry, and I will go back to it. So what I'm doing first on each of the petals is I'm coming in with the mixture of the pink and the purple, and I'm putting that in where the lines are, and then I'm smoothing it out. I'm then coming in with just the purple by itself or coming in with that first because I want that to be my darkest shade. Okay, so you can see, and you can see I'm coming in with a clean brush, even though I'm off the camera here a little bit, so sorry, see how I snap it back in. With the clean brush, I'm pushing it back down just to smooth that edge out. I don't want the harsh edge edges like I have on the leaves. I want to show you the two different ways that you can get a watercolor effect. The way that I lean towards is I do like the glazing in the leaves. I like that harsh line, that harsh difference um, when it comes to the image sometimes. Um, I think it just adds dimension. It adds texture to your, your focal point. But you can see with how I'm blending it out by using that clean brush and pushing those colors back down, I'm still getting my shades. And if I don't like it, I can quick sop it up. And I'm using the brush to do that. Now you can also use a paper towel or a towel to sop up the colors. But once it's wet again, I'm just dropping it back in. I'm lightly tapping it and then letting it do 
what it wants to do because it will move through this paper which is something else i wanted to see is it just going to stay there or is it going to bleed which is what i'm looking for and it does it does bleed through you can see as as i continue to do these petals you can see for that center one in the back that dark purple is coming up that petal and does fill in so you can see i just keep adding the pink and the purple mixture and then i come in with the darker and then i'm just pulling it all back sometimes i do forget to come in with a clean brush to pull that back so my petals do get to be a little bit darker than what i envisioned but i still do like the look of the two colors um, that are coming in i do tend when it comes to watercolors to overwork it um, sometimes you know you just go with what you see um, because that usually is the best and is the one that you'll like um, but i do enjoy this i do have fun with the process um, and that's pretty much where our flower is going to head and i just let that dry i let that dry on its own and here is our card so i use some purple gems i use a couple mats in the background and the sentiment even bad days have happy moments i fell in love with the bad days happen stamp set from alta new these are just and here's why not my circus not my monkeys that is a statement that we that me and a couple of other people say at work um, because we have so many departments um, and all of the issues that go on so that is the sentiment that i use it made me smile i love sarcastic sentiments i think they are wonderful um i think they're just great they're not the typical so i do hope you enjoyed how i used the alta new artist watercolor pan set there are 24 colors um, i hope you'll give it a try um, and by all means all of the products that i used will be linked down below into the video description and i do want to say thank you to alta new to reaching out and sending me these wonderful products that i was able to show um, to everybody here and just give you some tips and tricks along the way I'm truly grateful and i appreciate it any other comments or questions you may have please make sure you leave them down below um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Everyone, please enjoy your day. Stay safe and stay healthy. But remember what's most important to me, and it may help you get through this. Always be creative, everyone.